They will war the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I trusted even when I said, I am surely afflicted. How precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Let's continue with just the verse, please. What was that? We'll just continue with the verses, please. If that's... Your servant, Lord, your servant am I, the son of your handmaid. You have loosened my bonds. Thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. For the Lord in the land of the
My parish is composed of people like me. I help make it what it is. It'll be friendly if I am. It'll be holy if I am. Its pews will be filled if I help fill them. It will do great work if I work. It'll be prayerful if I pray. It'll make generous gifts to many causes if I am a generous giver. It'll bring others into worship if I invite and bring them. It'll be a parish of loyalty and love, of fearlessness and faith, of compassion, charity, and mercy, if I who make it what it is am filled with these same things. Therefore, with the help of God, I now dedicate myself to the task of being all things that I want my parish to be. Amen. Amen. Do we will have anyone visiting us from out of town today? Anyone visiting us from out of town? Where from? From Lake Ann. Good to have you. Good to have you. Not too far, but good or north. Oh, good to have you. Welcome. Anyone else visiting? Anyone else? Where from? Escanaba. Wow. Good to have you. Welcome. You're coming to the left snow, right? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Before we start Mass, let's just take a moment now to silence our hearts, prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your My dearest sisters and brothers, as we celebrate today this second Sunday of Lent and hear about the transfiguration of our Lord on the Mount Tabor, let's ask the Lord to keep transfiguring us into the people we need to be for him and for others. For those times that we fail and sin, let's ask God once more for his mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life that is everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger cried out to him, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you act as, as you did in not withholding your, from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The text for the psalm that we'll be singing this morning is, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. For the Lord is the land of the living. Your servant, Lord, your servant am I, the son of your handmaid. You have loosened my bonds. 
a thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the name of the Lord. For the Lord is the land of the living. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. For the Lord is the land of the living. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? Is it God who acquits us? who will condemn. Christ Jesus is who it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. As his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth, could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is so good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. They hardly knew what to say, They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved Son. Listen to Him. Suddenly, looking all around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, He charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone except when the Son of Man 
had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Before I start my homily today, I would like to share with you some of the awe-inspiring moments I had in my life on mountaintops and also how frightened I was. Way back when I was 21 years old, I had the chance to study in the Holy Land for five months with my classmates in the seminary as part of our education. One of the experiences was to go to Egypt, to Mount Sinai, to live in the desert for a week. We slept in sleeping bags on the sand, and we were warned by our leader to check every morning when we got up to make sure there were no scorpions or snakes inside the sleeping bag with us. Now, how many of us love snakes? How about scorpions? It was frightening. It really was. But one day of that five, that means seven days, was we went up Mount Sinai. It was a very interesting trip because it was one of going back and forth. But we walked it because we were 21 years old, 7,447 feet high. When you got up there, you saw a desert for everywhere around you. It was just breathtaking all that brown, dry earth. And then, what was most interesting was walking down the mountain. The monks of that monastery, St. Catherine's, had hewn out of the rock steps all the way down the mountain. When we got down and we got into the bus, we were exhausted. And everyone, as I looked around, legs were just shaking from exhaustion. I never experienced that ever in my life, something like that, and I will never forget it, ever forget it. But on that trip, we also got to go to Galilee to see Mount Tabor, to walk up the Mount of Transfiguration. What an experience that was, but not the same height, only 1,886 feet high. But at the top of Mount Tabor, as you look out on the land around, you see the most breathtaking fields, so lush with greenery, so much greenery that they say that in that land they can... They can harvest crops three times in one year because it is the land of milk and honey. Just beautiful to see that green forever and ever. What a contrast from Mount Sinai. So beautiful, so beautiful. I wasn't terrified in that one, but I had been on trips with other people doing that mountain where people laid in the car because they were so frightened going up and down like that to the hill. And then later on in life, because I was fortunate and blessed, I got to go to Maui and see Haleakala. To get up to the top of that mountain, boy, was it interesting. We got up at 3 o'clock in the morning and then proceeded to go up to the top so we could see the sun uh, rise in the morning. What an experience. But one lady said on the trip, I, I'm from Minnesota. I could stay in Minnesota if I wanted to be this cold. It was that cold up there. 10,023 feet high was that mountain. But what made it so terrifying afterwards is we took bicycles down the mountain. And I was with Father Pat. This is about 20 years ago. He was told, we were told, not to brake going down that mountain at all. Never brake on the bikes, just coast. Well, Father Pat, he kept braking, and everyone was frightened in that group of people because we thought we were going to all go off the side because of Father Pat braking. But we made it down safely. But it was an interesting experience. So much feeling God's presence on all those mountain tops. And then the last one I want to share with you is is Mauna Kea in the island of Hawaii. That is the tallest mountain of the world from the sea bottom, 32,000 feet high. The biggest, tallest mountain of the world. Not as tall on the land and sea level, but being up there so cold again, so cold, and there were people skiing on the snow up the top of the mountain. Never expected to see snow in Hawaii, but up there, what a breathtaking view to see all the beauty around. 
And but that one, we were up in cars, so it wasn't that frightening. But I remember how we just were freezing in T-shirts and shorts at the top of that mountain. But the beauty to behold was something never to forget. Those are my mountaintop experiences, actually on mountains. But in life, I know I've had many others. And I'm sure many of you have too. That's why I'm telling you these stories, because I want you to think now about those mountaintop experiences. None of us in this church have ever had a mountaintop experience experience like the apostles did with Jesus on that Mount of Transfiguration. What happened on that mountain was not only about how Jesus was changed, but really rather about how much those apostles were changed that day. We have all experienced what it's like to be changed forever by something that's happened to us in our life. That's what happened to these apostles. Jesus didn't suddenly light up and become something he was not. But rather, the eyes of Peter, James, and John were healed to the point where they were open to really see Jesus as he always had been. They saw his divinity. The voice in the cloud was nothing new, really. Their eyes and their ears were again opened to hear that voice that they had never, ever ceased from hearing before, but this time they heard it anew in a different way, in a different way. The transfiguration is as much about them as it is about Jesus. Every one of us could tell our own transfiguration stories in this church as something that changed us forever. And most of those experiences gave us new eyes and new ears for listening in a different way, discovering kind of a a window that opened to another world for us and another way of being. Not long ago, I remember a mom and dad who buried their older son, after which they said to me, We came home from that cemetery, and as we were lying on the bed, the husband related, I could not see him, but he was present to me. A little boy giving a a beautiful ride on my back, a piggyback ride. I could touch, not touch him, but I could feel his warmth. I could feel his legs in the ribs of my body as I bounced him up and down. For us parents, the loss of our son had become a window for us to which we stepped into the mystery of his death, but also of his life and the hope of his resurrection. We were changed. We were changed forever because of what happened. Think about the day for you parents here who when you brought your first child home, what that was like. We can all picture a newborn in your arms. The window through whom you stepped through that day, you know you were changed forever because of that little one. You experienced a new vocation. Now, no longer single, married, but with, with, as a parent, a different vocation. You became part of the mystery of God's creation. And the Lord's glory shone surely in your hands that day as it did on the Mount of Transfiguration 2,000 some years ago. You know that you were changed forever. And know that that change has continued to happen as you continue to live your vocation no matter how old you are as parents. I remember years back losing one of my dear friends from Alpena and she was at Munson Hospital dying from cancer. Together we talked and we laughed and we cried and sat there in silence together. She said to me, I had some experiences you know already. I've had visions, I've heard voices, I've kind of seen people. The picture of her life of cancer and pain 
And suffering had become for her a window. A window through who she knew she was going to step one day. A window that would take her to something different. And she began to understand in the midst of her cancer that she was already being healed. You know, she already was changed. And she knew she'd be changed forever. Think about the windows which you have walked through in your life where you have been changed, transfigured, your eyes, your ears opened in a different way. We all have had them. We all can name them in different ways. Like the apostles, we know that we want to stay in those moments forever. We want to be there forever. Like Peter, we're tempted to want to build a booth or a tent there and dwell in that place because it's so special, because things have changed, we're different. But we know to a degree we can't cling to the past. We have to go on. We have to go down the mountain to reality again. So Jesus, Peter, James, and John came back down the mountain. They couldn't stay there. But neither did they really leave the mountain experience behind. They continued to take it with them, as we do in life, our experiences. We take them with us. And for them, it helped them to go forward as they would experience Jesus' horrible passion and crucifixion. But then, to his glorious resurrection... Transfigured moments change us forever. They sustain us, they prepare us, they encourage us, and really they guide us to future, the future that regardless of the circumstances we're all going through in life, that sometimes are tough. If you think about it, we really are God's transfigured people. God has opened our eyes several times in life, and our ears in many ways at times to hear his voice. He's also transfigured our hearts when we love more to really be the people he intended us to be. And so on the second Sunday of Lent, as we reflect on the transfiguration of Jesus, let's revel in those moments where we've been transfigured, those mountaintop experiences where we could not believe what we were a part of, and also the fear. And let's go forth from this Mass today asking the Lord to keep helping us to open our eyes more, and our ears and our heart, so we truly can really experience those moments more in our life and know his presence is with us, carrying us on to the future. Amen. Open my eyes, Lord. Help me. Help me to hear your voice, open my ears, Lord. Help me to hear, open my heart, Lord. Help me to love like you, open my heart. Help me to love. I live with you. In you. Deep in your heart, oh Lord. Love. I live within you. Trust now in me.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God and light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, our Father, we now turn to you with these, our many needs, in prayer. During this Lenten season, the church throughout the world will seek renewal in mind and spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that church leaders will inspire the people by their authentic example of Christian living and service to the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That civil leaders will always be mindful of protecting the rights of the people they have been chosen to serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as the apostles saw the glory of God in Jesus, we too may see that every human life, even when frail and feeble, is a reflection of God's glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may unite their suffering with the suffering of Christ, who carries our burdens with us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died and are awaiting the day of perfection may share in the triumph of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Ron Fernowski, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let's also pray for the family of Ruth Schaffern, who passed away this week. We ask that God blesses her daughter, Debbie, and her son, Patrick. And may that this Wednesday when we have her funeral at St. Rita's, it may be a true testament of the beautiful life she's lived on this earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord. God, our Father, thank you for calling us here on this beautiful day. Thank you for allowing us to be transfigured here as we come to you and receive the Holy Eucharist. Bless us in this Mass and keep us always faithful to you. Bless us as we go forth here into the world, seeing your face and hearing your voice. Answer these prayers we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, our ushers will come forward to accept your gift of love and sacrifice. Thank you, people of God, for all you do for our parish. Thank you.
pray, my dearest sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us from all of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and in mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told his disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory to show every even by the testimony of the law and of the prophets, that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with all the powers of heaven, the angels and the saints, we worship in awe before you. May our voices now acclaim your glory. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceasingly at work so that the human race may become holy as you are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out upon them the power of your spirit that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we too have become your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest of love. For your son alone, who was just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took the bread and giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed upon the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those that you have called shares in this one sacrifice of Christ and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit as they partake of the one bread and the one chalice they may be gathered into the one body of Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart together with Francis our Pope Walter Hurley, our Apostolic Administrator Bishop, help us all to work together for the coming of your kingdom until we stand before you, saint among the saints in the halls of heaven. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Philip, Mary, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, who we commend to your mercy and your love. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you the song of thanksgiving in Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare now to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith, the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Shall we bow to each other as a sign of peace?
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. This is my son, my beloved, in whom is all my delight. Listen to him. And for those joining us virtually in active spiritual communion, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Oh. Thank you.